grab a songbook. Welcome to church tonight. Glad you're here. And uh, boy, I tell you what, with this winter weather this week, I was thinking, man, are we going to have snow on a Wednesday this this late in April? <clears throat> but uh, wasn't that crazy? I know uh, yesterday there was definitely snow that accumulated on the vehicles. Had to actually get out and brush it off to be able to drive. But Anyway, glad for a nice evening tonight, nice chilly evening out there, but it's good to be in church. Let's take our songbook, turn to page 146, 146, and we'll sing a shelter in the time of storm. Let's all stay and sing it out on this song. Mr. Ira Sankey, and uh, he was a tremendous musician, song leader, uh, even songwriter for uh, D.L. Moody, I believe it was, and back in the circuit riding days, in the days of uh, D.L. Moody would go and preach in cities, and they would uh, just come by the hundreds and thousands even to hear him preach, and what a great man of God he was, and of course, Mr. Sankey, his songs that he wrote and led in, in those services were just amazing and so good song tonight and thank you for being here let's pray we'll ask the lord to bless church tonight all right father we love you thank you for this evening and we thank you for uh, the songs that we can sing and lord they're so true as we sing the words uh, to songs such as this one and lord we can come to you in our time of storm and when we do that here on a wednesday night we come to you for help and we uh, just pray that you would meet with us Lord, I pray we'd have a good evening in church, a good Bible study. Lord, in our prayer time as well as the Patch Club, Lord, bless all that we say and do tonight. And we'll be careful to praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. All right, we'll see if anyone needs a prayer card real quick. We need a one to fill out. All right, very good. Be filling those out. We'll collect them after a while. Right now, we're going to go ahead and let the young people be dismissed. So you all can go ahead and head on out to Patch Club as you get those papers. All right, very good. All right, good, good, good. Thank you, young people, for being here tonight. <coughs> sure do appreciate that. All right, Brother Carol, I'll have you lead another song here in just a moment. You can be ready for that. Let me just go over a few announcements, not a lot uh, to really go over tonight. And probably going to get right here to the preaching in a moment and probably be out early. And we'll have to wait on the young people maybe a little bit tonight. But uh, I've been fighting some sinuses and allergies. I don't know if I've heard some of that stuff going around. 
Well, I tell you what, it just knocked me on my tail yesterday, and I just had to take it easy and, and to take a, a, a bunch of that uh, Alka-Seltzer uh, pills. That's what I take, and it helps me out. And so, uh, but anyway, let me go, go over these announcements. want to uh, just encourage you to be here uh, this Sunday. We look forward to church, and we will have our Bible reading checkup. Hope that you're caught up on your Bible, and I've uh, been enjoying my Bible reading this week that's uh, taking place uh, with the children of Israel as I'm studying and reading through that. But we'll check up on that this, this Sunday, and uh, it'll be a great thing. Then uh, we'll have Sunday night a church workers meeting, and I might have kind of announced this in, 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 a, in a wrong way, and uh, my wife was telling me, said sometimes I don't communicate the, the best way sometimes, and Sometimes, I guess, men, we think we're saying something, and it comes out a different way. I don't know. But this meeting is for, for everyone, everyone in the church, not just for uh, people that are already working, but this meeting is for everybody. And I'm going to encourage uh, just everybody that can to come to this meeting. And I'm just going to kind of share my heart with the church and uh, kind of a burden to get more folks involved with different areas of service. And I really think that if we love our church, we'll want to put effort and work into it. And so looking forward to the meeting Sunday night. And so it's not just a meeting for people that are, are currently doing something. Um, it's, it's kind of a church-wide meeting and say, come on and, and listen and catch the burden. And it'll probably be something that you might want to jump in and get involved with. <coughs> Excuse me, a missions moment with a missionary Sloan. On May the 2nd, look forward to that. Of course, Mother's Day on May the 9th, look forward to that, as well as we'll have several baptisms that day. And then uh, May the 16th, uh, Sunday Night Delight, we'll have the Providence Baptist College uh, singing group with us on that night, and we'll enjoy some special music and then a time of fellowship after the church service on May the 16th. And so a few things, of course, uh, uh, Brother Carroll, you can go ahead and come on up and get ready for that song. Of course, there's... Uh, the gospel tracks there in the back, and I challenge you to take uh, take those. And uh, you know, some of the children have uh, taken those, and I'm encouraging my boys to make sure they pass them out. So parents, you can kind of help uh, you know notice if your kids are taking tracks or whatever. Uh, kind of keep an eye on that. We don't want to be wasteful, uh, but I do want to challenge them to to do the same thing, pass out tracks. So uh, those are back there for that. All right, let's sing one more song, and then we'll get right to the preaching tonight. All right, take that hymn. We'll turn to number 355. What a friend we have in Jesus. Number 
Your Bibles tonight, and we'll get right to the Bible study. First Timothy chapter six. If you will make your way over there, First Timothy chapter six. We'll continue talking about Jesus Christ. Our study, uh, just kind of a. Oh, a synopsis of his ministry and some different characteristics about him, <clears throat> some things that he was, and the blessing it's been to understand who Jesus is. It uh, reminds me of that old song that says, I'm glad I know who Jesus is, and I'm so thankful that, uh, that I know who he is. <clears throat> so thankful that uh, he's my heavenly father tonight, that I know I trusted in him. We talked about that Sunday night. So such a blessing. But tonight we're going to look at 1 Timothy chapter number 6. And we'll look down at verse number 13. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 13. All right, the Bible says, I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things. And before Jesus Christ, who before Pontius Pilate, witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate the king of kings and lord of lords now we've been going through the different offices that Jesus held that he was and I'm so excited to get to this one tonight and we'll talk about Jesus Christ, the King. Jesus Christ, the King. Father, I pray that you'd bless now the preaching of your word. Lord, may we just be drawn closer to you when we realize who you are. And Lord, we're so thankful that you came and were born in that manger. <clears throat> Lord, you were born King of the Jews. But Father, we know one day you'll come back to rule and reign forever. We look forward to that day. And we're thankful for the opportunity to be in church tonight. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Of course, uh, we were just uh, quickly by way of review talking about uh, Jesus and uh, the different positions that he now, uh, we, we now see that he had. And Brother Steve, I switched over to the lapel just so you know um, which microphone I'm on now. We're going to see if it'll uh, work for us tonight. But uh, three different positions previously held by leaders that God used in the Old Testament in the past. And we'll just remind quickly here that uh, the leaders that God would use in the Old Testament to help His people uh, were, number one, the prophets. Uh, and again, prophets were used by God to, uh, to basically reveal what God wanted His people to know to His people, to reveal knowledge and ultimately to reveal God's will. And so we're thankful for the prophets. Then we looked at the priest. The priests were used to provide holiness, and they were used to be that middleman. And we talked about that last week. I'm so thankful that, uh, that we no longer have to use a priest anymore. We no longer need a middleman. And, of course, they did. They used to be in that predicament. They couldn't go directly to the throne they couldn't go directly to God. They needed someone on their behalf, and so they would go to the priest. And there's religions today that are still hung up on that uh, theology, if you will. But I'm thankful that Jesus became our high priest. And then we saw that kings were used also in the Old Testament. And they were used to provide rule. They were used to help uh, to provide that leadership, that government, and the rule, of course, uh, we understand that there came a time when the people wanted what they wanted. And, and so God said, okay, I'll let you have it your way. And they, they said, we want a king. And so we're going to look at the correlation of how Jesus Christ is also the king. You understand when they put him on the cross, they put that sign above his head, uh, 
king of the Jews. And, uh, of course, we'll, we'll get into some of this tonight, but, but let's first of all start off by talking about some of the prophecy that would prophesy Jesus as king. Now turn with me, if you would, to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 9. Isaiah chapter number 9. Of course, the book of Isaiah, a, a book full of prophecy and much about the Lord Jesus Christ. But look at Isaiah chapter 9. One of the most familiar Christmas verses concerning the coming Messiah was this prophecy of, of him becoming the king. I think I'll just switch back over, Brother Steve. It's I thought we'd try it tonight, but a lot of, a lot of feedback up here. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6. Notice what the Bible says. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. That's prophecy there, and we'll get to that in a moment. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his, here it is again, government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So uh, this, of course, part of prophecy is, is telling that Jesus would come and be born in Jerusalem. Uh, or, or be born in Bethlehem, rather, in that manger, and uh, he would be born, and he would be the Messiah, he would be the king. But, but part of this here, it says that he'll be in charge of the government. This is prophecy. This will come to pass one day. And uh, it talks about uh, that the government shall be upon his shoulder. It talks there about the increase of his government and the peace uh, it's just going to be a wonderful time when he comes back to rule and reign. It says in verse number 7 that he will sit upon what? The throne. The throne of David. Uh, what is this referencing? One day he's going to set up kingdom, folks. I mean, this isn't just a fairy tale. We, we love to read uh, stories. Our kids like story time, especially the younger ones. Sometimes they're fairy tales. Boy, you can just, you know... Uh, my, my middle son, Dylan, he's real good at just making up stories. We'll say, hey, come tell us a story. And he'll just take off, I mean, just telling a tale. And, boy, it's fun to listen to him as he just makes this thing up as he goes. But you know what? This isn't a fairy tale. Jesus Christ is coming back. And one day he will sit on the throne of David. And the Bible says there will be no end. What is this talking about there? There will be no end upon the throne of David going to be eternal he'll reign forever and ever now just before jesus was born <clears throat> turn with me to luke chapter one <clears throat> just before jesus was born the angel came and told mary a basically the same threefold prophecy that we just read uh, luke chapter one and verse thirty. Uh, let's back up to verse number 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now, look at verse 30. And behold, <coughs> thou shalt conceive in thy womb, bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great. And shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him, notice what the angel says now, the throne of his father David. We find the same prophecy given in Isaiah chapter 9 here in Luke chapter 1. The angel repeating the same prophecy that uh, God had given to Isaiah years and years earlier. Notice verse 31. Um, I'm sorry, uh, verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of David, uh, the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob. Here it is now, forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Doesn't that sound just so familiar? 
almost verbatim Isaiah chapter 9, the prophecy. Jesus, uh, the angel said, he'll reign and rule. He said, he'll sit on the throne of David, and there will be no end, and your rule will last forever. So we, we find here Jesus prophesied as king. Now let's notice where this prophecy actually now is fulfilled. Let's back up to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, and we'll look at verses 1 and 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, notice what the wise men said, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. <clears throat> you see, the wise men, they knew the king was born. And uh, they had been looking for the Messiah. They looked for the king. And they said, now, this wasn't during the, the early uh, years of, of Jesus' birth, uh, but rather when he was already, um, you know, we're, we're not exactly sure how old he was, but I believe uh, at least a year or two had probably passed from the birth of Christ and Jesus was still a baby, uh, perhaps uh, getting to that toddler age, uh, the wise men came uh, there to try to find the king of the Jews. Now the prophecy that the, uh, let's turn to Micah, back in the Old Testament, that the chief priest and scribes found, Micah chapter number 5. In verse number 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee, here's the prophecy now, shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So here's the prophecy that the, the uh, priest and the scribes that, they would refer to, and uh, in Matthew chapter 2, uh, we see that the wise men said, where is the king of the Jews? Then if we notice in verse 3, continue in Matthew 2, verse 3, when Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, <coughs> in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So what the priest and the scribes just quoted here in Matthew chapter 2, they, they were telling King Herod, here's the prophecy that was told. They were quoting Micah chapter 5. Uh, that You see, these folks were learned in the scriptures if we could put it that way they knew the prophecy not only did the priests and scribes uh, know this but Nathaniel in John chapter 1 in verses 48 and 49 testified that Jesus was the king of Israel notice with me in John chapter 1 verses 48 and 49 Nathaniel saith unto him whence knowest thou me Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. So we see again, Jesus as King. Of course, we know the, the very uh, you know, infamous Palm Sunday and what took place in that triumphal entry there found in Luke chapter number 19. And, of course, this is when Jesus was uh, hailed as king of the Jews. But let's read of it, Luke chapter 19, verse 35. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt. They set Jesus thereon. As he went, they spread their clothes in the way. When he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice.
for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, here it is now, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. So we see that uh, Jesus was hailed as king here shortly before his crucifixion. And Jesus accepted that. We read on in verse 39, some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Oh, what a great, uh, great thing that the Lord said. He said, listen, if, if these people would hold their peace, if, if they weren't the ones crying out, Hail, King of the Jews, he said the stones would cry out. Why? This, they, knew, they knew what was going on. Hey, this is Jesus. He demands our praise. Skip over to Luke 23, just for a brief moment, in verse number 3. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. He said, You got it right. That's exactly who I am. So we see that Jesus came as king. <coughs> he was born king of the Jews. He accepted that. Uh, title upon his life as he lived and as he ministered during those several years in his earthly ministry. Yet one day he will come back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But even though he was king and even though he was, uh, he proclaimed he was king himself and others proclaimed him king, many still rejected that. Look at Luke chapter 19 and verse number 11. We find a parable here that Jesus gave. <clears throat> and it was a little bit, I think you would call it prophetic. Saying, hey, here, let me tell you a story about something that will come to, that will take place here. Luke 19, 11, as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable. Because he was nigh to Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. This was a parable that Jesus gave. And you know what the parable was? that this king's own citizens would reject him. It was a prophecy that there was going to be folks that would reject Jesus Christ as king. And, of course, they did. The prophecy came when Jesus was crucified. Let's notice John's account of the crucifixion. John chapter 19. John chapter 19. Let's look at verse number 1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. So we see that the prophecy came true where he was mocked, first of all, as king. The Bible says that they smote him with their hands. You know, what a, what a just very disrespectful and uh, you know can you think about you know just when someone would take their their hand and slap you I mean that is just uh, one of the one of the lowest types of disrespect you can give someone and they mocked him they smote him the Bible says and then not only that but in verses 12 through 19 uh, you know the Bible says that they rejected him as king. Let's read it. And from thence Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover at about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, 
Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. So we find here that when even Pilate said, Here's your king. What do you want me to do with him? Do you want me to crucify him? They said, no, he's not our king. We have but one king, and that's Caesar. The prophecy came true here that Jesus was not only mocked, but that Jesus was rejected as well. But one day, and here's where it all boils down to, talking about Jesus as a king, one day he will return as a king. Let's go to the book of Revelation in chapter number 17. Revelation chapter 17 and verse number 14. Why well, I love the song. And matter of fact, uh, not so long ago, I uh, heard a message that, that so moved me and helped me that I wanted the church to see it. And we heard Brother Justin Cooper preach on the king is coming. Oh, what a great message that was. And you hear that old song saying, uh, the king is coming. I can hear the trumpet sounding. Hey, listen, the king is coming. Revelation 17 and verse 14. These shall make war with the lamb. The lamb shall overcome them. This is, of course, Jesus Christ, the lamb. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So Jesus, the Lamb here, the Bible says in Revelation, will come again as king. Uh, John chapter 1 gives Jesus the title or the name, the Lamb of God. You know, and I think that it's so uh, interesting to know that as Jesus is coming again, this time he's not coming as a lamb. A lamb represents someone that is... Uh, that is uh, you know, that sacrificial lamb, uh, it, it represents someone that is, that is not uh, coming in strength or power. And Jesus isn't coming back this time as a lamb. The first time he came as a lamb, but this time he's coming, the Bible says, as a lion. Revelation chapter 19, verse number 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in, white, in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. As gentle as Jesus came in the book of, uh, of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as he came into this world, and as John, the forerunner of Christ, said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. This time he's coming back, and we can say, as a lion. He's coming to conquer. He's coming to take control. He's coming to rule and reign forever. And by the way, uh, you and I will be with him. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, it'd be a good thing to go ahead and take some horse riding lessons. Amen. <laughs> hey, I grew up with horses and, and rode a lot of horse in my life. It's been a while since I've been on a horse. But uh, oh, back at Ava's birthday party, I think, was the last time I was on a horse. But anyway, listen, we're coming back. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a day of conquering not only will Jesus return as king but he will remain as king forever as we read in our text verse in 1 Timothy chapter 6 the Bible says that he is the blessed and only potentate that word potentate well doesn't mean when that coffee's too strong and it's 
potent, amen. I, I'm not a big coffee drinker, and if that coffee's too strong, it just gives a bitter taste to my mouth, and I almost shudder. Oh, that was too strong. No, potentate means this, the only one. He's going to be the only rule. There, there will be no others. And he'll remain as king of kings and lord of lords. One of these days, Jesus Christ shall reign forever and ever. And as Revelation chapter 11 says, uh, it will rule over the kingdoms of this world. You say, what's going to take place? Well, this isn't a lesson on prophecy tonight. But what's going to happen, just briefly, is this. I believe that Jesus will come in the rapture. And this is not to be confused with the second coming of Christ. But this is the rapture of the church. When Jesus comes in the clouds, uh, he'll not step foot on the earth. That trumpet will sound. And the Bible says that we'll be, if we're alive, we'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Those that are already dead in Christ, the graves will burst open. We go to heaven, the tribulation period will begin. And there for a while, it'll be good. Three and a half years of good peace. And then all of a sudden, the last three and a half years of tribulation, I mean, things are going to be, uh, things will take place. And this whole world is going to get in awful shape. The Antichrist, of course, will, will come on the scene and the mark of the beast and all those things. And at the end of that seven-year tribulation period, we have what's called the second coming of Christ. And that's what we read about in Revelation. Jesus comes back on that white horse to rule and reign forever. And the ultimate showdown between the king of kings and this whole world, the devil himself and all his powers won't be able to conquer Jesus. It will be a great battle called the Battle of Armageddon. Again, I say this. This isn't a fairy tale. This will actually take place. You know, we read the scriptures, we read the Bible. Some of these stories in scripture we might think sound like a pretty good fairy tale. They do. When you talk about the parting of the Red Sea, that sounds like a pretty good fairy tale to me. You talk about the ark. You know, David killing Goliath, all these things. They sound like fairy tales. The three Hebrew boys thrown in the furnace. No, these actually took place. And the book of Revelation is not a fairy tale either. It's going to take place. That battle will take place. And the Bible says it's going to be a great, great battle. Casualties will be just innumerable. Matter of fact, the Bible says the blood will run down through the valley there, bridal deep. Can you imagine that? Bridal deep, I'd say a record that's about, oh, this high maybe, a horse's bridle. From all of the bloodshed. And Jesus will set up his kingdom. Amen. We'll rule and reign with him. Oh, it's going to be great. It's called the millennial reign of Christ for a thousand years. This whole world will be a different place. The story is told that when Queen Victoria was a young girl, she went to hear a musician named George Handel. The particular concert given that night was Handel's Messiah. And of course, we probably all have heard that at some point in our life. Everyone stood when the music rang out there on that great Messiah King of kings and Lord of lords. When Victoria rose, others who were with her sought to restrain her, saying she should not stand because she was queen. Victoria answered, I am queen of England, but Christ is my king of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, listen. One day, the Bible says, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. He is Lord. He is King. Can I ask you tonight, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, in reality, He should be your King, just as He is the prophet and priest. In other words, do I allow Jesus Christ to sit on the throne of my heart? The Bible does clearly teach that He is to be the Lord of my life. Whatever He says goes. 
And no, I'm not uh, a citizen of his under that uh, mighty thumb of his rule. No, he's a good king. I gladly say, I'll serve you, whatever I can do. Does he rule? Does he sit on the throne of your heart? Uh, does he rule your thought life? Are your actions and motives governed by his word? I challenge us tonight, let's yield to his authority in our life. Not because we have to or, you know, whatever we should, but because we want to. And he sure is good. Let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you for this Bible study. And we thank you how we can look to your word knowing that uh, all things written have come to pass or one day will come to pass. And we look forward to that day when you come as king of kings. Lord, help us now to allow you to have your rightful place upon the throne of our heart. We'll be careful to give you the praise and glory for everything that you do. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, very good. Let's uh, collect our prayer cards tonight. We'll have our prayer time.